This video is about making some pull-out drawers for one of our cabinets to um, help with storage space. In the past, I've made them for um, other cabinets that we have. There you can see there's one that's a um, small cabinet next to the stove that I made a couple drawers for pots and pans. And then next to the sink, there's another one where I added three shelves to a um, cabinet for like the corning ware and, um, you know, different plastic bowls and stainless steel bowls and whatnot. And then under our island, I also added a couple more for, you know, just storage of our Falls Craft dishes and stuff like that. Now, these shelves really help when you have a, um, you know, a small amount of cabinets in your kitchen and you really want to try to maximize the space and make it easy to be able to use them and organize them. So this video is basically just, um, you know, doing four shelves for another cabinet that we have that really, um, you know, needed a little bit of help. So there it is. There's the cabinet. You know, it's just kind of storage for extra storage bowls. And I started by bringing in some of the rough cut ash that I cut on my sawmill from my backyard. Now it was stored out in uh, air dried for the last two and a half years it still was over 11 almost 12 percent moisture content so what I started by doing is um, just bringing it in I started cutting the, the boards down to the size that I needed and um, you know they're all rough cut and they really need a little more drying so I just started to rough them all out so first thing I did after cutting them was I took them over to my uh, joiner to try to get one good flat sot edge on them and you know I took I do like to do a couple of thin passes on it just in case they warp a little bit as the stress is relieved when you're taking a cut off the surface so I'll do two or three passes on it in like this just you know not maybe about 30 second of an inch off and um, try to get them real nice and flat to start out with and then the next thing I'll do is I'll standing up, stand them up on edge and I'll joint one of the edges to be perpendicular to the flat surface. Now this, you know, this takes a couple minutes to do and um, this little pusher that I made is really handy when you are doing a lot of big boards. And there you can see it does create a lot of chips but they're nice small chips that pack down easy. So after getting uh, one flat side and one square edge, I'll go back to the table saw and then I'm just going to rip all the boards to the, um, you know, the starting size. I'm trying to get them down as small as uh, I possibly can so that I can, you know, they won't take too long to air dry the rest of the way. So I just took them back to my saw and um, just an amazing saw. It doesn't slow down for anything it seems like. But the one thing I've been having problems with is this uh, Frude Premier Fusion Blade. The thing has so little clearance that it just builds up a um, pitch from the ash on the back side of the gullet there you can see. And it just burns everything when you rip it. So um, it works great for cross cutting but when it comes to ripping it, uh, it really stinks. So basically there they are, you know, ripped to the same size. And the last thing I'm going to do now is just run them all through the planer. Um, now, right after I got done with this, my planer actually uh, went up in smoke and it filled my whole, whole shop with smoke. The motor burned out and um, burned up pretty good. So, right now I'm in the process of uh, looking for a replacement planer and um, hopefully I'll find one soon. Looks like Grizzly has some of them coming up next year on sale, so I think I'm going to head with a, uh, a Grizzly spiral head this time. But, you know, so here you can see it. I would rough cut lumber. You have to start with your thickest boards and, you know, make passes with them and um, just try to bring everything down to size slowly because uh, it's, it's never perfectly, they're never all perfectly the same thickness once you, uh, you know, join them and flatten one side. So, there's the stack all, um, all ready to be stacked up. And there's some uh, stickers to put between them because the next thing I'm going to do is take them up in my great room next to the wood stove and stack them up, as you can see there, with the stickers between them and just let them sit there for about two months now to drop the moisture content down to a um, usable moisture content. 
Now for this project I decided to make some plywood sides to actually hold up the slides. Um, all my other ones I had mounted the slides directly in the cabinets and it really turned into a lot of work and um, you know hard to get everything perfectly aligned so I figured I'd do it different this time and try to make some plywood sides that I would be able to mount everything on and then just slide the uh, whole unit into the cabinet at once. So you know basically here I'm just cutting up some three-quarter plywood that I had bought for another project. At the same time I ordered slides from Grizzly and when the box came the UPS lady said boy this thing is awful light for being supposed to be 30 pounds. And it turned out that um, five of the six sets of slides that I ordered were missing. So luckily Grizzly went back and filed the UPS claim and they sent me out the missing slides and the other stuff that was missing from the box. And I've had really good luck using the Shop Fox slides from Grizzly. Um, full extension, 100 pound capacity, and they're you know really low priced, and they do I you know they do seem to stand up well. So these are 26 inch full extension slides that I'm using. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to you know mount them to these plywood slides. But first I've got to cut a couple rabbits on the back of the slide to put a back piece in. So I got this little um. This little depth gauge that came with a safety set from Grizzly that I had purchased. And that makes it nice to set the saw up. And, you know, I don't, didn't feel like putting the dado set in right now. So I'm just going to take the saw and just use the eighth inch wide blade and do two, two passes on it. Just to get the little rabbit on the edge for the uh, back to set in flush. Yeah, this was some of that uh, $29 sheet plywood from uh, Home Depot that I bought a while ago. And, you know, I really, it seems to work out pretty good for projects like this. And the next thing I did is I cut that piece to uh, give me a spacer for the slides once I determined the uh, spacing on them. And just to make it easy to get everything, you know, lined up and mounted properly. So then I, just to start out, I just took and um, I started mounting the outer the slides to these two outer um, pieces of plywood using the screws provided and um, you know this is just kind of just to start roughing everything together and just to um, you know tr test everything out before the final assembly so there they are and you know I put them on one side and then I just put them on the other the the opposite sheet also and I needed to cut a back panel just to hold the uh, the back in place or to hold the two sides in place then I went back and I just just about a month month and a half later I went back and checked the moisture content and it was right down around 9 9.1 there you can see so um, I figured that's pretty close to you know that should get, allow me to start using it I really like to get it down about to 8 but I didn't want to wait anymore and it does take a long time to go down those last you know that last point so then I went back and I took everything that was roughed out and I started cutting everything to the final size and, um, and there we have it just kind of the you know the roughed out strips cut to the final size Then I just sort of went back and jointed everything and flattened it again and um, cut everything there it is I'm just kind of going back through and joining everything trying to get all the burn marks off that were left by those uh, by that premium fusion blade and um, you know I got everything pretty much cut down to the final size at this point point. and there you can see I, I went back to the uh, blade that Grizzly supplied me with the saw and that blade actually does do a great job at the rip cuts it's not quite so good at the cross cuts but um, in the end I went, I'm winding up using that one for all the rip cuts right now and then I went through and I started cutting out pockets in each of the sides of the drawers to um, to recess the slides in. and there you can see this uh, this saw makes an over two inch cut through ash like it's butter. I mean, it doesn't even slow down the motor. It, um, it just, you know, just keeps right on going. I really do, I really am happy with the, um, the way this saw works and the quality of it so far. 
About the only complaint I've had was, you know, the dust collection on it. I've had some problems with the, um, the dust holes under the blade getting plugged with chips that fall down, but, you know, other than that, it's been pretty good. So now I've got all the, um, you know, the deep cuts taken out, and here I'm just going back through and taking out the, um, the final cut so I have a, uh, a pocket there so I can just kind of bury the slide in so you don't see it when the drawers are, you know, fully pushed in. You only do see the slides once you pull them out. Yeah, that's that little feather board I got with the safety kit from Grizzly there. And that thing actually um, looks like a piece of junk, but it works really good. And here's, um, you know, that's how the uh, slides are going to mount to the sides of the drawer now. You can see, you know, you, you do not see them when the drawers are in. And then, you know, here's that problem I have with my saw. That hose there does get um, full of uh, chunks of wood that fall down. And you have to go in there and clean it out. This time I made the mistake of, see that router base mounted there? Well, I hit that with my head on the way in without looking. And um, I just couldn't believe how much blood came out, dripped out of my head over the next, like, three minutes. But um, anyhow, that's all healed up now. And I'm just, you know, here I'm just going back and I put a stop block on the saw just to allow me to cut the sides to the proper length. And I mean, this is just the easy way to get the same length when you don't have a, uh, you know, real good uh, cross cut jig or anything made. I kind of miss my sliding table that I had with my old saw, but, um, you know, someday I may add one to this saw. And there you can see the stop block and you just always take a notch like a little corner of it out so that in case there's a burr on the corner of the wood uh, you'll still get the same length. So now it's time to go back to the saw and place that uh, Infinity Dado head on there. Um, I got to cut the dados in the, um, for the joints and the corners of the, the, the drawer parts. And I, you know, I made these a very super simple joint to put these drawers together that uh, can easily be cut on a table saw. You know, no fancy tools required. You just need a dado head and it turns out to be a very strong joint also that, um, you know, I've had success with in all the previous drawers that I've built. And there's that old uh, jig for holding the uh, wood up for tenure that I got years ago and that really is handy when you want to cut slots in the end of a piece you know in the end grain like this and you can see it it really helped hold it up um, I mean you can do it with something clamped to your fence but uh, this this is a real sure you know safe way to do it I find out and there's all the um, the drawer fronts and backs I've got the uh, first cut of the uh, joints for putting together and then I'm just going to put a stop block like that on my saw and just uh, go back and take and cut the um, just a little bit of that bottom tab off. And there you can see it's just going to kind of give me a, a simple interlocking joint. And that's what they look like there when they're, the fronts and backs are all cut. Now on the sides I'm just going to um, go in and as you can see here take the that dado head and put a groove in there to meet with the groove with the tabs that are sticking out on the uh, front and back. So I just do that front and back at both sides and then I go back and I put a groove along the length of the sides and the fronts and backs just to retain the drawer. So there it is. That's just that's how the joint's going to go together. Just a very simple interlocking joint that um, you know turns out to be real strong for something like this and there's all the parts just you know cut and ready to go and you can see I had to notch out the back pieces for the slide clearance also if you look and I just had to go back and cut some drawer bottoms for each of the drawers so um, what I'm using here is just some it's a uh, plywood that they sell at Home Depot that's sold as a, a flooring underlayment plywood that's a little bit under a quarter inch thick, but um, 
you know, it had both sides. They're really, really nice and smooth, and they don't have any voids in it. So I just use this because it's, you know, it's only like 12 bucks a sheet, and it works good. And there's the drawer just kind of, you know, put together with the, the bottom in it, and, you know, the joints held together by hand. And this is just kind of, um, you know, doing just a little test fit before I glue everything up to make sure it's going to, um, you know, fit in the line. That's pretty much like what the, uh, you know, the drawer unit is going to look like when it's all together now. So now it's time to go back and start, you know, doing some of the final sanding before I glue it up on the, actually the insides of the drawers there that you can't get to later. And, um, so I decided that, you know, I was going to, um, oh, okay, there's a fan unit that I made. I just took a box fan and I have a filter that slides down in it that I use whenever I'm sanding in my shop. And I've had really good luck using this to, um, collect the dust. And someday I may do a video about making another one because I, you know, I'm thinking about making the second one. And, um, you know, it works good for collecting the dust and I just put it at the end of the table where I'm sanding and it seems to get most of it. And so I, you know, I decided at the bottoms of the drawers, I was going to put a, um, you know, just put the first coat of polyurethane on before I glued everything together, just, uh, so that if anything shrunk later or, you know, anything like that, you would not have lines that you saw later. So I, I did a coat of polyurethane on, you know, all sides of the bottom. And then I went back and I just did some final sanding on the inside of all the drawer parts before I put it together. You know, just because you, it'd be hard to get at those sections later. And I went over and I have this clamping board that I made up that, um, uh, you know, I've been using for gluing stuff up. And it really helps to get picture frames and drawers and whatnot like this square because it has that um you know the two square pieces to register it on the um the x and y and then it's all set up with the same pattern as my cnc router so i can use um either the cam clamps or the wedge clamps to just kind of hold everything together and pull it square before i put the um the bigger clamps on you know they put the final pressure on it so this is just gluing the drawer together I started by you know putting some glue and spreading it on the um, you know the first couple of joints then the you have to slide the uh, drawer bottom in the grooves there and then the next thing is just you know add some more glue to the uh, the rest of the joints and put it together and um, I did not put any glue on the uh, the grooves for the drawer bottom. I figured I'd just kind of leave that float in there so I wouldn't have problems later. So here it is, uh, you know, just this is the first drawer going together. And uh, you just kind of got to wiggle everything to get the little bit of bow in the plow. It makes it a little bit tough to uh, to get it lined up in that groove on the final side. But you just have to, um, you know, work with it and work it in there and get everything so it's pretty tight. And then the next thing I do is I just, um, you know, I, I just put a couple of those wedge, well, you put wax paper under each of the uh, corners so glue doesn't, this thing doesn't get glued to the table. And then there I'm just putting those wedge clamps in that I use to, um, to hold it in place until I just put these final clamps on to um, apply enough pressure so that you know it squeezes all the glue out and um, you know I've, I've had really good luck using this table it's not quite long enough to allow me to get clamps on the end of these drawers but um, you know for most other things that I do it it works well so this is just uh, getting the clamps on to to pull everything tight together on these drawers and, uh, you know, I always check the square, but using this, uh, this, this, you know, gluing board and clamping board, it always comes out perfect, so you really don't have to worry. So there's the um, first drawer all glued up, and there's how the, those uh, wedge clamps kind of hold it together. And um, so now the, uh, the first one's all done, and you can see that there is the wax paper I put under each corner and you just uh you know when you're done you just peel that off and then you know I moved on to the uh 
the next three drawers and got them all clamped up and then I just did some final sanding on them after that was done just to get everything you know perfectly smooth and remove any glue left over and then I took my little trim router and I went around the inside of all the drawers here as you can see with just a little eighth inch radius bit to break all the edges and I also went around the outside of the um, the drawer there and the top and bottom on the, uh, the two sides and the back to break all those edges also then for the, the front of it I wanted a little bit bigger radius so I just took them over to my router table set that up with the, um, the larger radius and you know ran it on the top and bottom of the front there as you can see All right, so you know now they're all the drawers are all done, and it's just a matter of going back and doing a uh, a final sanding on them. And it really, you know, it really isn't that much left to sand at this point. It's just a matter, of, you know, getting getting rid of any uh, imperfections during the glue up, and uh, you know, any little burrs or anything that might be left. Uh, you know, at first I use that, R, that uh, bigger RO sander, and then I just go back to this little block sander for the the final 220 grit sanding on everything before putting a finish on it. And then it's just back over and putting uh, I put two coats of a um, water-based polyurethane on these. Uh, I really don't like the water base, but it turns out that it um, you know it dries quick and it doesn't really smell up the house or anything in the winter so that's what I wind up using so there I got the first coat on and there you can see how the joints kind of work out and you know how how they go together everything glued up and here's the other three drawers with the first coat and I just uh, did a 320 grit sanding after that and then I went back and put the second coat on them all in the meantime I wanted to dress up the front edges of the plywood a little bit that's going in there to hold these drawers so I just cut some ash that was the same thickness as the plywood and I'm going back here and just uh, applying some glue to it and I'm just going to glue that onto the front of the panels I decided it really didn't need any kind of a mechanical fastener here so I'm just uh, you know I'm just going to line it all up and, uh, and glue it and, uh, you know, I find these little spring clamps help a lot when you're trying to line something up with, uh, you know, something that's the exact same size. They just kind of pull everything flush and, and even as you go along. So it helps to have a couple of them on hand when you're doing something like this. So it's just, you know, this is just, uh, you know, just gluing everything, just gluing the front on there and then letting that dry for a while. And so then I went back and I had the other side that I did the same thing to and decided to, you know, I wanted these sides to kind of match the cabinets a little bit. So I have some stain that I've used in the past, uh, um, you know, to kind of match the cabinets. It's actually, uh, turns out when you first put it on, it's really a lot lighter color than the cabinets are. But after it sits for, uh, you know, probably about a month or two, it starts darkening up and uh, really matches halfway decent. So all the exposed surfaces, I just put a uh, coat of stain on there first and let it dry overnight. Then I went back and I put two coats of this uh, water-based polyurethane on it. Now it's time to go and mount the slides onto the drawer sides. So there's a little lever that locks the, uh, the two pieces of the slide together. So what you have to do is just push up that little lock and you, you can slide the, uh, you know, that moving section out. And then I'm just going to screw that onto the sides of the drawers. Now to make everything easy to align, you can see there I've just cut a block of wood that's the exact spacing that I need from the um, that lip on the drawer down to the slide. And I'm just going to use that to locate my slides as I drill the holes and uh, screw them into the sides of the drawers. Now I wound up just using uh, four of the mounting holes on each side and four screws to hold the slide to the drawer. So 
It's just a matter of you know drilling some pilot holes and making sure that there's a piece of tape on the drill bit to keep me from drilling too far and you know having it come out on the inside of the drawer. And then once you're screwed on, pull that uh, block of wood out, and then the slides will just you know slide together like that. And there you can see they're pretty much hidden, but yet they um, you know they'll they'll work good. There'll be no binding or anything. So there they are. They're all all lined up on and screwed onto the drawer sides and now I'm going back and just using all the um, the original holes that I had mounted these slides to the side with and I'm just going back and um, I wound up using five screws on each of the uh, the slides into the plywood and there weren't enough screws supplied with the slide so I had to actually pick up a couple of them you know to have enough so just, you know, using that block to align everything, get them perfectly parallel. Then I had a, um, a front spacer there to get them all perfectly lined up. And, you know, I found out that this really, in the end, turned out to be the easiest way to mount these drawers. Um, there's no binding. Everything uh, just slides, you know, really, really nice and smooth and, um, you know, correct side clearance and everything else. So I'm happy with the way it turned out. Now that I got everything the slides in place and I'm just going to um, go back and staple on that uh, that back piece just kind of hold everything from from shifting until I get it installed now um, you know there's a there's the final assembly what it looks like and the slides just um, you know they pull out full 26 inches um, really strong and sturdy and you know here's the cabinet we're getting ready to put it in now uh, there's that little shelf I made for in the other video for my microwave and you can see how that cherry is turning nice deep red now and I made those butcher block tops also um, so now it's time to start cleaning out this cabinet here um, you know it's just kind of full of extra storage containers for the you know, leftovers and whatnot so I started by emptying it out and then there was a shelf in there that I thought would you know just kind of come right out twist and bend a little bit and come out but turned out in the end that uh, they had glued it in some dados around the uh, the back side of it and I wound up having to do a little bit you know more work to get it out so I just had to take a dead blow hammer and just just beat on it until it started breaking apart um, you know luckily it was only particle board and that stuff breaks up pretty easy once you um, you know you get past the edges on it so took a little while to to knock that piece out that shelf out and then to go back and clean up the mess that I had left in there but um, there you can see the grooves it was locked in around the side but you know after after getting that out and getting that all cleaned up <clears throat> I just um, you know brought up my my final cabinet here and it was just a matter of sliding that right in the end there and seeing how this is a corner cabinet you can see there's a uh, you know three doors on it so I, I was gonna make the shelf wider but I decided I wanted to put some storage shelves which I'll show you in a little while on the um, in the inside the other two doors so you know first thing I did is I just slid that in there and um, it really worked out it fit perfect um, spacing was just right so I didn't hit hinges or anything and I had pre-drilled some mounting holes to allow me to fasten it to the old cabinet to um, you know keep it from moving around or rocking or anything so I you know I had to do a little bit of shimming on the back of it the old cabinet was not quite perfectly square but once I got everything all shimmed up and lined up perfectly I just went back and um, I had some screws that went in the front there that actually these are hidden by the drawers when they go in later and um, they pulled the front real nice and tight and then behind each of the drawers in the back there was a um, another screw that I put in so there was another four in the back just to kind of hold everything together I'll hold it into the cabinet and keep it in place there so then um, you know, once that's all mounted in the cabinet 
just a matter of taking the drawer slides and the, you know the two halves just kind of slide right back together there you get them lined up and um, you don't always get them lined up the first time but once you get them lined up they uh, there it is they just slide in and um, lock together so this is yeah basically what the drawers look like uh, when they were first installed and you can see that they you know they fit in there nice and they actually are long pull out they do pull out the full 26 inches so um you know they do give us a lot of storage space there and i'm real happy with the way they fit so um and these uh shop fox slides they just uh i've been so happy with them they're they're you know a lot cheaper than any of the other slides you can buy but i've had good luck with them and um you know, they seem to stand up well with a 100-pound capacity. So, you know, as long as nobody stands on the drawers or anything, they should be fine for the use. So now we just uh, open up that side door there. And you can see all the stuff that was piled on the, the shelves, plus a little bit more from other cabinets. Just kind of, you know, is organized fairly neatly now and... Um, it makes it really easy to get to and see what you have so you don't have to get down on your knees and just, you know, crawl in there and look. So it did work out good in the end and it did give us quite a bit more storage, you know, in that area. And then I went back and I did some measuring and um, the video was getting a little long so I didn't show making all these parts. But I made the, um, the final parts that go in in front of the shelf in front of that uh, pull-out shelf behind the um, the other two doors and so now here I am there's just piece of plywood I glued in the bottom to, to kind of hold hide the old uh, interior then there's another piece that um, I made to fit in to hold some shelves and fill in that section on the um, side of the drawers and there you can see everything uh, you know just kind of I've got a assemble it in place because there's no other way to get it in there and everything was kind of cut to be a uh, real tight fit before um, I finished it and after putting a couple coats of polyurethane on it it turned out being um, you know basically a, a super tight fit that required some taps of a hammer to get the things in place but as I, I went along and put the parts in I just you know put a little glue on it so um, we ever want to get it out again later it's probably going to be a problem but uh, so it, it's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle getting everything together at this point in time because um you know there's not a lot of room and there's overlapping of all the uh the cabinet surfaces so um and i put those uh the the side pieces in and then there's a shelf spacer there and then goes the first shelf and here you see again uh got to tap everything in place because of the finish so I got the um, the first shelf in and there's another spacer to hold up the second shelf that I put in place with um, you know just adding a little bit of glue just to hold it you probably don't need it it'll probably stay on its own but I figure just for the long run and and then there goes the um, the second shelf which is another kind of a tight fit uh, you have to take the drawer out above it to get everything in place and then there's just one more spacer that goes in to uh, fill the top in so that's you know basically just finishing off the top there of the uh, the inside it's just a block to hide that old uh, you know particle board interior there and make it look kind of like wood again so um, and this is, you know, basically what this looks like. And we decided to use this for dog or dog food. Um, we have two little dogs and shelves are a good place to store their canned food, which we feed them a uh, mixture of some wet food. And then we also um, feed them dry food, which we buy by a five pound bag. And uh, that turns out it'll fit in uh, six of those quart mason jars. So, um you know, and there's some room in there for the heartworm pills and some treats and stuff. So, you know, basically it's just a cabinet for all our dog supplies now that worked out pretty good. And then, you know, there you can see how the, those shelves actually filled in that corner. This is just one of those project ideas that, um, you know, has helped us, uh, you know, get a little more storage space in our small kitchen and um, is real easy to make. Uh, so I thought I'd share this with you. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.